with all the big calls on all those big races. Welcome back this weekend. Time for another What A Shout film somewhere in the capital on a Friday morning. Dave Orton, thrilled to be back with you out there. What a panel we've got for you this weekend. What a guest. It's group one time, only the lock -inch at Newbury, of course. All about the sizzling flat. Let us know what you think. You can do so by liking and subscribing on YouTube. Anything on Facebook, of course, we all read that. And Twitter, hashtag, what a shout. Let's get straight into the action for you out there. And welcome back to bedfellows, I think we can call you now, Pretty can't we? Part. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. But this is becoming a recurring thing. Yeah, I know. It's great to see uh, an extra man in the office. Thanks for coming down, Pat. It's a long, long way for you now. I bet you're not going to make it too regular. <laughs> no, I, I like coming down here. It's always where are you? good fun. You're at Newby. You got, you got I'm not going to Newbury, but I have been uh, last couple of days. I was at York week before that Chester, so yeah, uh, right. I've seen all plenty of the classic trials. Well, I'm back to steer the ship, chap. Bruce did a sterling job last week, didn't he? And could we have seen two classic winners at York this week? Kills uh, starting the music door on Wednesday. Frankie Dutori, John Gosling, Emily Upjohn. Short answer, yes. Right. I think yeah, yeah. I think they're both very, very good. Emily Upjohn looks the real deal, doesn't she? Uh, Fresh still, but know, keeps finishing the races. You know, already starting to compare with a Nable. Uh, you know, Here we go. Frankie said she's not quite a Nable yet, but she's getting there, sort of thing. Like, you know what I mean? So, so yeah, she does look very, very good, doesn't she? Uh, you know, and in in a in a year when no real filly stands out, mm. you know, she's starting to. So yeah, I can see why she's favourite. Are we looking at another snowfall here, Pat? What price is she then? As we speak at the moment, she's eleven oh eight, and we were I think we went oh. seven to four immediately afterwards, and we're thinking, well. Tuesday of Aidan O'Brien's got the third in the 1,000 guineas, which is always a good place to start. But she was visually impressive. She's a very big filly, though. Uh, you know, she's been winning on, you know, flattish tracks, straight mm. long courses. Epsom, I don't know, undulations that may catch her out. But if you said to me, who's the best filly in the race? And who will end up as the best filly? You'd have yeah. to say that. Emily. Yeah, John Gosson said afterwards he might go and get a sausage, I believe, and have a bit of breakfast, didn't he? And see if she takes the camera. Yeah, on the I mean, it's one of those the... things. You know, I mean, I, I'm sure jockeys and trainers will tell you more about it than I do. But they talk about horses being well balanced. And if you've got a well balanced horse, it doesn't actually matter what size you are. I don't yeah. think. No, you know, it's well, it's an ability to handle it. You can Something see some, we know well about. See, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> you can see some. You can see some small horses not handle yeah. some camber if they're not ju if they're not just balanced enough. Like you, you know, were there so. on Wednesday, but I was there on on Dante Day, and like London buses, they all come along at once. So Michael Stouts uh, unbeaten. Another Derby winner? Well, supposed to be barely ready and has beaten the form horse in the race pointless in Royal Patronage, who settled beautifully considering how fast he went off in the... He cruised, didn't uh, he? In, in, the, uh, in the guineas. You, I, I thought, my one worry about him, because I backed him at a, a double-figure price, thought so this price is just wrong, he should be nearly fab. Like, you know, is if he settles, he's going to run a massive race because he's definitely bred to get the trip. And, yeah, he's still beaten pointless. Mm. My horse having only the second run of his life on, you know, easily the fastest ground he's ever run on. Trainer said he's barely ready. You watch the interviews asked after he had that little sort of glint in his eye that he had you know, after walk after workforce had run and got beaten in the Dante. Like you know what I mean? So I, you know, I think, yeah, I think he's a real deal. We've seen we've seen Aidan O'Brien mop up all the other trials, by in races that weren't actually very good on paper. And I think the Dante was the best one on yeah. paper and. Uh, the most impressive winner. He's, he's the right one at the head of the market for sure. Another worthy south then, Pat. Yeah, and with Desert Crown, we had laid plenty of him at anti post over the last couple of weeks. So, whatever he'd been doing at home, he must have been impressing uh, a, yeah. a good few people. But uh, as Keel said, you know, he, you know, we were all trying to get him beat at prices in the Dante. He went to a very backable price given the lofty reputation he had. But he beat them so well. Uh, you know, we've had horses beaten in the Dante go on and win a Derby. But this looked very, very visually good. Um, hard to pick flaws in him. And it, and it is Sir Michael Stout, isn't it? So uh, I, I was impressed with Stone Age. I mean, you're only as good as your last derby, yeah. Charlie. Uh, last uh, Sunday, I thought Stone Age. I thought, yep, yeah, that's the derby winner. Uh, but he could be out there making the running and you could just see Desert Crown sitting in behind and winning. I, I, I think Desert Crown is a very, very solid favourite. There you go. You heard it from the panel. We have just seen two classic winners, we think, at York. What do you reckon? Get your questions in below. Stick your tips up for the weekend as well, and on with the show we go. We will be giving you four big race previews. Let's crack it out in one bundle for you. After we've spoken to classic winning trainer in Newmarket, William Haggis, only by Eid coming out to play again at 3.20 in the lock inch. And you'll have to hang on for those all-important weekend winners. 
Right, without further ado, let's go to Somerville Lodge then in Newmarket, talk to classic winning trainer. William Haggis joins us on the line. William, good morning. Good morning. Oh, that's it. Absolutely. You should be full of beans. It's been a great week for you at York so far. Two winners up there. We'll get into them shortly. And uh, a very exciting weekend ahead. So I'm told. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, I'm going to ask you if you don't mind about four horses in particular running over the weekend. Uh, we're looking at further afield, obviously. We'll be talking about, you know, the derby coming up. And what have you made of the classic trials this week, uh, William? Do you think we've seen two winners? I, I, I thought yesterday's uh, horse was impressive. If he's got enough now to go around Epsom, I think he'll take a bit of beating. Yeah, he was putting away at the line. He beat the right horse, didn't he? Um, of course, you've had a couple of winners up there yourself. I must admit, can we just get this out of the way? Uh, Dave, how is he? I want to know. You know he's my favourite. I'll tell you how he is. I don't think we've had him better for the last 18 months. That is great. I think he's in really good form. So he's going to run next on the 19th, I think. Is it the 19th? He's going to run the Brigadier Gerard anyway. 26th. 26, 26, isn't it? Yeah, Kills is yeah. always there, so you can, there. you can you can you can watch out for him when he comes in. So just need a bit of juice in the ground for him, do we? As usual. Uh, yeah, well, he 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 probably run anyway because it's sand down, <coughs> and they water pretty well there. But I want to run him at Ascot, and if he wins at Sandown, he'll run in the Prince of Wales, <coughs> and if he doesn't. He'll run in the Walterton again. OK, and you know the sort of spring we've had. It's odds on to rain at Ascot. It must have been pretty galling for you. I spoke to you just before you were going to go to Dubai with him and we were looking at the Ranvert stakes, etc. down at, at down at Ranwick. It was barely raceable, was it? It rained for two months, it has. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's sod's law, isn't it? Very much so. We've got some old friends coming out then this weekend, William. Pat Cooney was going to ask you a question, actually, weren't you, Pat? Yes, uh, William, uh, I've got a question for you. And it, obviously, it's a big year for Her Majesty the Queen with the uh, Platinum Jubilee. So you had a horse that went at our uh, Craven meeting that we sponsored, won the last race one day, Educator, who only won by a nose, but it looked a red-hot race and he's a fine, imposing horse. What plans would you have to uh, make the Platinum Jubilee celebrations go with a bang for Her Majesty? Have a guess, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing Royal Ascot might be on the radar. No, we, we're, tr we're trying to be even more clever than that. I think he's going to go to Epsom on Derby Day. Excellent. For the mile, for the mile and a quarter handicap. Good stuff. I, I told you to ask him that. <laughs> I said that was the race. <laughs> Don't worry. We know what we're doing here, William. And of course, uh, we'll be talking about the London Gold Cup later. The favour that John Gosland's ran third to him, so you'll be keeping an eye for the form there. He's an interesting horse going forward. Let's get cracking, if you don't mind, with your runners at Newbury, culminating in the lock-ins at 3.20. But you've got Tiber Flow in the 135, and he's sticking at the sprint trip. He's never run on turf. He's a pretty good horse, though, William, isn't he? And he's the son of Caravaggio. Pretty good horse. Um... He'll run a really good race. I don't subscribe to the fact that he needs the all-weather. It's just circumstance that got him there. Um, he, We're running him six furlongs primarily for two reasons. One, there isn't a seven furlong race around this time. And two, there used to be a race called the King Charles II State. Yes. I think at this meeting, but they switched it to the Guineas meeting to boost the card, which was pretty unhelpful. Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, and the other thing is that I don't really know whether he's six or seven. I think his inexperience caught him out at um, Newcastle. When they quickened, I think he took two or three strides to get his act together and then came home. Um, so we'll, that's why we're running him six again. He's in the Commonwealth Cup, which is a bit ambitious, but you never know. Uh, and he also could run in the jersey. So if he... If he uh, runs on and finishes third and looks like he wants further, which he has done in the past, mm. then we'll run him in the jersey. And if he scoots up, we'll run him in the Commonwealth Cup. Pat, what price is he at the moment? I'm not too sure, but to whatever oh, it is, that's quite a bullish uh, comment. He's, he's, so. he's, uh, I think he's nine or four favourite. I mean, I, I've, I've actually I, I've actually tipped against him tomorrow. I've actually said I, I, I expect him to be running in the jersey, so we'll, we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> well, William mentioned that. I mean, you uh, look yeah. like a younger version he, of Pat, and you're yeah, now doing his I mean, job was, for him as well. He was, so, <laughs> he was so strong at the line, wasn't he, yeah, um, yeah. At, at Newcastle? So, you know, well, let's go on to the 210 then, Kills, because we are agreeing on this. We will be previewing the 210 mm. uh, after William has, has gone to watch some racing. Um, Illarab, we think he's got a chance here, don't we? I think he's a, I think he's a big price, yeah. I mean, he, he loves the course. I mean, they, they put plenty of water on, got eight mil of rain. 
Uh, so I think the ground's going to be absolutely mm. perfect. I mean, it was border, you know, the, the going stick yesterday morning said it was borderline soft side of good to soft. It's obviously dried out a bit and will continue to, but I think it'd be perfect for us. OK, so this is in the Aston Park, William. And, and of course, we talked to you, it was actually this Friday last year when Al Arza, you had a twinkle in your eye about him and Jim Crowley sort of won as he liked in that. He's gone for the same prep, this chap, hasn't he? Of course, he was fourth in the John Porter. I watched that back this morning. He just levelled out late. Yeah, he, we, Tom thought it was a bit firm for him, and he was a bit rusty. He, he he never really shaped properly, and that wasn't a very strong race. This is a strong race tomorrow, uh, but all the good one, well, the two good ones, Ishada and uh, Scope, have got big penalties. We've got a penalty, sadly, still. Um, so I think it's a tight race on the on the figures. Fox's tail is going to win by. And I'm not sure he wins that often, does he? No, he doesn't. It was a good run at Sandown for him, wasn't it? But they toyed with yeah. headgear for him before. Uh, having a run in the Aston Park Stakes is usually, you know, as you know with Al Arzi, it, it, it's, it, it's usually a winning tick, isn't it, next to the name? Let's move on then, William, because the big one comes at 3.20. Everyone's waiting for him to come back out. It is Baid. Again, I remember speaking to you about a month ago. You were saying he's taking his time. When has he started to show you he's been ready? Oh, he's been ready for a bit. He, he went to Chelmsford about 11 days ago and, and uh, he was pretty good then. He, he, he's, he's in good form. He's ready to go. Right. Okay. It, it, it's quite a difficult one because um, everyone's, you know, all this nonsense about, you know, oh, we're all waiting for him to run. <laughs> it, it's quite a, it's a nice problem to have, but it, I could do with the race just getting on with it and hopefully winning, and then we can move on. Yeah, the likes of me knocking on your door and Sky and RTV and all that sort of thing. I know it goes. You, of course, Gills, you look at the pedigree, and you he's got entries in the Eclipse and Prince Wales as well. You yeah, see? crikey. I mean, you know, I'd imagine, it's good, you know, if he wins the lock it's going to be hard to, tur to turn down what would look like a penalty kick in the Queen Anne, wouldn't it? Because, obviously, there's no three-year-old Guineas horses coming in there. It's the last mile race, so... But, I mean, surely uh, at some point he's going to go up to 10, William? He must. You'd think so. Um, I think uh, <clears throat> I think he's pretty likely, as you say, it's a foil of that, an upwards race. And if he wins on Saturday, the Queen Anne is obvious. Um, you know, and... But I think he... I'd love to give him a try at 10 at some stage because he relaxes well. And his pedigree surely s says that he, he could be better over further. But... You know, we we don't need to do that yet, and I think John Gosden has a cult of Shadwells that he'd like to run in the Prince of Wales, so it makes sense um, yeah. to to keep at the Queen Anne. Yeah, that's the Sandown winner. I'm assuming that, uh, that you're uh, referring to there, um, William. What did you make of the Guineas winners, the three-year-olds? Because it, it it will get to the time after Royal Ascot, won't it? Assuming that he comes through that as we most of us are expecting him to, touch wood. But you'll be thinking about the Sussex, or is that the time when you might looking at internationals? What did you make of Caribus? Oh, I was pretty impressed with him. I did think, uh, well, I don't know much about it, but I did think it was possibly an advantage, not a big one, but an advantage to be on that side. Um, and possibly Native Trail was that at a small disadvantage. Uh, I thought it was a strong 2,000 guineas beforehand and at the time and afterwards. Uh, the other race... I was <laughs> thrilled for uh, High Clear and George Bowie, um, who's a good mate of our sons. But I, I didn't think that was a very strong race, I have to say. Yeah, Probably so, wrong. OK. Yeah, so Caribus was a pleasure. I think we'd all agree about the draw, wouldn't we, by the way? Mm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, was, I think half the, half the winners on the straight track came from stalls mm. one or two over the weekend. So, yeah, definitely. Um, mm. How much so remains to be seen. Mm. Well, that would be I a remember when I, uh, we ran Scardu in the 2000 guineas, and Magna Grisha won, and he was drawn on the stand side, and the second was a 50 to 1 pop called, he was a good horse actually, he turned out to be a good horse called King of Change. Yes. Yeah. Only three of them came to the stand side, the winner and the second and one other, and we were drawn one, and he finished third. So it was a, it just shows, you never know, do you? Yeah, wherever they put the stalls at Newmarket, it, it does seem to be one side or the other, doesn't it? Let's stick at Newmarket, if you don't mind, and William. The final horse I'd like to talk to you about. Really fascinating run of this. Huge eye-catcher on his debut at Nottingham. Post-impressionist, then went up to air. Won pretty much as he likes, and he's enlisted company tomorrow at 150. Yeah, I, got, I declared him. I'm not convinced I'm going to run him, because it, we, 
I declared him because it poured with rain at Newmarket, and I thought, oh, the ground's going to be good. I don't want to run this horse on firm ground. His mother loved us off. And, and so I'm going to take a rain check tomorrow because we had a blustery day today and it dries out quick here. So I just gonna be, I'm just going to be, I'm just not sure yet. And he's, he's a pretty nice horse, I think. He's a work in progress, uh, but obviously with Ascot close by, uh, I just need to find out where we are. And I'd like to run him uh, up in grade, but I'm not convinced I'm going to run him here. All right, great stuff. Well, thanks, William. Time flies when you're having fun. We could speak to you all morning, but we do. We know you're on the clock. So well, thanks for coming back on What A Shout. My pleasure. Have a good day. OK, then, great stuff. That was absolute pleasure, wasn't it? I know I often say that, but that was very enjoyable. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's just very talkative, very free, uh, you know, one with his time, one with his comments. He obviously right, likes you know. your kills, yeah. you know. Oh, I'm sure he does. <laughs> yeah. He's a great friend of sports betting at the Racing Post back in the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, like, you know, we would, uh, you know, because he was a big sports fan, we would ring him up lots of times. You'd always because that was used to be your you'd always wasn't get it? a quote. You'd always get a quote. Off Do you remember him, the yeah. days when you used to see him next to tennis and things like that? I'm coming up for 35 years. Now, <laughs> you know that, <laughs> That's it, and uh, you've lost it in weight this God year, Kills. So it's all good, yeah, isn't it? Exactly. All right, shall we get some of these races out of the way then? Because yeah. uh, we've got to look at the 210, haven't we, at Newbury? Pat, take it away, please. Well, this is a six-runner race, and as things stand at the moment, we're three to one the field. I wouldn't even know what's going to go a favourite for this race, never mind win it. And to me, it's just a race of negatives. You've got Scope, good horse, mm. but he wants further, and he hasn't run this year. You've got Eshada, good filly, she wants softer ground. You've got Illarab, maybe disappointed on his reappearance, don't know. Fox's tail, good solid reappearance, but moving up in trip. Outboxed. Well, I suppose the one thing I know about the race is that's going to make the running. But yeah. is it good enough? Don't know. Without a fight, one good run in Maidan, followed by one bad run in Maidan. Mm. So I'm not sure where to go with this race. I kept coming back to Fox's Tales, who um, ran a, a second to John Gosden's and Thady Gosden's wish to death in a Group 3 at Sandown, and I was there that day. And that is a highly regarded horse of the Gosden's, and this kept it honest. Now, whether it wants a mile and a half, I don't know. But at least it hasn't got the penalties, which uh, the likes of Scope, Eshada and Illa Rab have got to carry. Does it win that often? No. Am I sure about the trip? No. If there was a box for none of the above, I'd probably be ticking that. But I just think Fox's Tail has got the better recent form. Yeah, you got, obviously, the word from William Haggis, didn't you, in the interview there. So we like Illa Rab kills. It's a price thing, isn't it? But also well, having that run. <sighs> Well, I like him because you know when I was look, when I was looking at the ground. I mean, the going stick went down to five point six on Thursday morning after the eight mile rain. That means they've put a hell of a lot of water on the track because you know it's been bone dry, um, uh, you know, for the last month basically. Do you think they did and, that to make sure by turn oh, up? Oh, it wouldn't be a great surprise, would it? Mm. It wouldn't be a great surprise um, because obviously he doesn't. You know, I don't think he'd be running him on good firm ground. Yeah, uh, you know, but I think they put a hell of a lot away, and then they got caught out by eight mil of rain. And you know that going stick is suggestive of ground slower than good to soft. Like you know, now it has dried out already, and it will be drier again. So mm. it'll be it'll be good ground. But uh, and I think that'll suit Illarab perfectly. Um, I would take issue with the, with the idea that without a fight, ran a, a bad race in Maidan. I mean, he might have been twelve or fifteen, but he was only beating five and three quarter lengths. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you that. In a Group One, he is a bit of an uh, in and you know, out horse. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, on you know, form, he looks. I mean, they were the two. They were the two that. I got to, mm. like you know, but I can see, uh, you know, I, I can see Ilera running a bit. Who's the best horse in the race? Is it Scope? Uh, I mean, the, Scope's, well, Scope's handicap probably, probably the best horse in the race, but he's got he's got, he's got a big penalty. We've got two track. Group One winners in the race. Good yeah, race, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a good race, but you know, they're, yeah. they're penalised. They're going to have to they're going to have to come out all guns firing to get rid of those penalties. I think four of the last five had had to run, winning mm. the Aston, uh, as John Porter seems to be the thing, mm. doesn't it? So we spoke to William there. We like Illarab. Let's move on to the London Gold Cup. I love saying that race every single year. It's one of the best three-year-old handicaps. It always has group horses lurking kills. Have you found one? No. Underwhelmed. Uh, really? Is what I say. Well, the funny thing is... It was a big fanfare I mean, for that I gave <laughs> him, wasn't it? Well, like this, build is up. It. this is it. There isn't a single horse with a group entry in the race. Wow. Like, you know what I mean? Which is unusual. Uh, now, it doesn't mean there aren't horses that are miles ahead of the handicap mark, but when you look at some of the higher weights and you think, well, if you're already almost 90 and you haven't been given a, a, an entry anywhere, you just wonder whether they think you're limited in the, yeah, to a certain extent. So my, my theory of that was, <coughs> oh, let's have a little bit look further down the weights. I came 
down to Mr. Big Stuff, trained by Richard Spencer. And, you know, he was obviously showing the right signs at home, let's say, because the entries for the derby weren't made until February this year, and he got one. And he came straight back out of it after he got beat off a mark of 78 at Nottingham, but he didn't half shape like the best horse in the race that day. Mm. He was drawn on the outside, as was the winner, funny enough. But the, the winner made, made the run in, and... Uh, Mr. Big Stuff raced in second, but he just raced keenly all the way, and he looked like he was running all over him a couple of furlongs out. The pair still pulled away from the others, three legs clear of the others. Interesting. Uh, and, you know, I just don't think Mr. Big Stuff got home because he raced a bit freely. He struck me as though he was the best horse in the race. The winner went up five pounds, has gone up another three for running second uh, next time um, to a horse that ran well at York, and he runs, it's Al Kareem, he runs at York today, so, would you know, you, you will see what happens to him. Yeah, OK. Uh, and, you know, I just think a £3 rise, uh, stall, a draw in stall four will allow Holly Doyle to get a bit of cover. Low drawn runners, seven of the last nine. Yeah, exactly. So you've got the right, got the right place. Obviously, it's not the biggest field in the world, it's only 13. So, um, so yeah, got the right draw, get a bit of cover. Uh, I think they'd be quite happy with the ground, won't be too fast as well. Uh, and he was third last year, Nottingham. Desert yes. Crown was the winner. Okay. What because sort of... Yes, because you think you know his name, don't you? We've all been looking at that form now of the Derby favourite, yeah, and of yeah. course he pops up in it. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Kills might have found one here. He might have done. It's sitting around about 7 or 1 at the moment, but um, I noticed you put this horse up during the week before Desert Crown won mm. the Dante. So, you know, a lot of people are going to jump on that. Wow, six lengths third to Desert Crown. Um, it did happen, it is a matter of fact, so I would imagine that would be popular. Of course, mm. all Holly's mounts are popular. Sure to be a shorter price. I do like Isra of, uh, of the Gosdens. It was third in, in a real warm handicap at Newmarket. There were just the seven runners, but the first and second came with tall reputations. And this one was an honourable third. I'm not thrilled about talking to stall numbers. This is drawn 12 of yeah. 13. Uh, but that's Jim Crowley's problem, not mine. I just thought, you look at it... These ones you got your money down, mate. <laughs> <laughs> We're yeah. hiding them away. But, but I just thought, if you, you know, you touched on the previous race, well, who's the best horse in the race? You could see Israel going forward into those group rate enlisted <laughs> companies. So I say, I'll, I'll leave the draw to Mr Crowley and say he's the best in the race. Yeah, I suppose Underworld is right. If, it, if it, this had had a lower draw, I think, you, I think we might be looking at potential gift doors. He hated Newmarket, the dip. Yeah. Watch that back in your members club, you can do it. He looked after him as well and he's finishing. Well, he might not be the classiest horse in John Gosden, so I think I'd be surprised if they, they didn't think he was going to go really close here. What, what price is his right? Well, he, he's seven or two at the moment, but you can mm. make plausible cases for other horses on the up. Surrey Miss comes here with the back of a couple of decent runs. There's a few of them that they, you know, they're progressive, they're lightly raced and unexposed, hard to get a proper handle on. Mm. But at least if you're back in Israel, you're back in a Gosden horse and you, with, uh, that's had a recent run. Kills underwhelmed then in the uh, London Gold Cup, unlike the Lockins. Ah, the Lockins, yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's a very good race with a very good uh, favourite, isn't it? Uh, a bit like last year when Palace Pier was a short price. Uh, but some, you know, pre pretty decent horses in behind. Mm. Uh, and, you know, we've got Mother we've got Mother Earth for a start. We've got, uh, we've got Real World. Um, don't quite understand, given what Real World's been doing in Maiden, why he's in position, he's in the market. Mm. Uh, I think if there's an each way bet in the race, it's alcohol free. Uh, I think she'll like, you know, if there's any kind of ground, she'll definitely like, she'll definitely like that. And connections weren't at all surprised. In fact, they were quite pleased uh, with her run at Sandown. Uh, they dispensed with the hood, didn't, didn't seem to make any difference to her. Um, but, you know, she was third at Sandown, she was strong at the end, they knew she needed it. Yeah. Um, so she's, you know, she's been laid out for this. I don't see her beating Bayed. I may play the forecast if she doesn't, uh, if she doesn't come too far in in the market, because I have a feeling she's going to be the one they latch on to. I don't think she'll be fourth favourite of fourteen to one uh, come race time. Yeah. Like you know, if she is, I'm, if she is, I'd probably play a forecast then. She's a classy animal, isn't she, Pat? And can yeah. we entice kills in with a without market? Perhaps? Yes, betting without. Baid is going to be a very interesting market, and of course, as the win book, you translate that to the the without. And Mother Earth is around about a two to one favourite. Mm. To be honest with you, I, I get where you're you're both coming from. I, I'd be hard pushed to say alcohol free should be twice the price of Mother Earth. I never felt that when they were running in three year old. It's a good shout. Group isn't one it? fillies. I I think that's far too much of a gap. Yeah. Mother Earth, okay, fine. She came out and won first round. But Skeel says when uh, alcohol free ran at Sandown. They, they weren't at all bullish beforehand. They were just happy to get the run in and we're going for the lock-inch and, and so forth. 
I can't make alcohol free twice the price and she will start considerably less without the favourites of the market to be looking at because I suppose you chalk up by Eid with what William Haggis is saying. You know, he's ready to roll, isn't he? He's not going to be short of a run. You look at alcohol free without the favourite and I could see, yeah, well, yeah, I, I see wisdom in that. Mm. I half thought Sunray Major, again, the Gosdens, Frankie de Torre, not often there, 25 to 1 in a Group 1 race. This was behind alcohol free in that muddling race at Sandown. Yeah. Do they want to find out for certain this, he's not a Group 1 horse and he is just a, a, a very good handicapper? I don't know. But he's another one that I could make some sort of a case out for. Sometimes but. it's a case that it's, it's all they've got to run, though, isn't it? Yeah, there is. You know what I mean? Through my mind, John having you know a one-seven I mean? runner, obviously, doesn't he? And yeah. He, yeah. he looks at one point like he might reward some support in that classic mile, didn't he? But yeah. he yeah. just and he's obviously the Kingman sibling, isn't he? But yeah. he, 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 I don't know. Mm. It's hard to see, I think, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. So by pole position, alcohol free. After the week, I have had. I need to go down that route, so I shall be. <laughs> uh, shall we give you a little extra as well? Let's go to Newmarket, still on the rolling mile. And for I think for the first time this season, Kills, the st stalls are going to be stand side at this meeting. I thought it said centre. I think I, I said, I th I'm sure I saw. Oh, 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 oh. Stu's inquiry. Right, Stu's inquiry. Bing bong, on, Kills. Be the adjudicator. This is what we like. I want to shout, of course. I know, stall stand side. You yes. are correct. In you go. You are correct. That's good for me because I like Saleh. I'm going to give him another chance. I thought they rode him wrong last time. What race are we looking at? It's the three o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> It's the three o'clock. He's back in trip. I've got one here. Yeah. But I think they're going to be aggressive with him. If they go to, back to what they did in the Lincoln Bat from stall 12, getting that yeah. golden highway. We heard William Agus talking about the draw in the classics. Not a problem here. Sometimes you see your horse on the stand side of the new market, you think happy days, and you see it's a hold up horse, and you think, Ugh. you know, even Frankie struggles to get through those gaps sometimes when they go into the dip. This will be up there. Yeah, I like the fact this one's dropping down in trip. But it, nevertheless, I, I, I was a little bit disappointed last time out. Um, I, I, there's several in the race with leading claims. I do think Shine So Bright is very much of interest. And, uh, you know, I, I think when it comes to these handicaps, you've got to be looking at Harry Davis claiming seven because he, he is the next big thing, isn't he? We've got Benoit de la Sayette. You've got it right. Thank you very much. <laughs> And you've got this guy, Harry Davis, who everyone just is like, yeah, yeah, he's the mm. next person. So when you've got him taking seven pound off a horse's back and you half think it's the one anyway, I think you've really got to be interested. And Harry Davis claiming seven, one on this fella last time out. He looked a tricky ride prior to then, but he got a tune out of it. He won well, he went up four. If he's got the tune out of it, why not stick with him until he gets beat? OK, all right, there you go. There's two tips for the three o'clock. Everyone would have heard you, so you've got one. Chance of Bright, I always aff 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 affiliate <laughs> with you. I'm, am I right? I'm yeah, no, I've had, a, I've, I've had a bit of thing for, uh, for Science of Bright for ages and finally got my money out of him last time. He drifted Big like price, wasn't it? Yeah. Like, you know, couldn't believe it. I mean, I actually backed him in, in the morning at, at, at like 11 to 4 or whatever, and you were, you were backing him at, you know, 5 and 6 to 1 later on in the day, which was ridiculous. But uh, yeah, I think I might have found one that uh, might have slipped under the radar. I uh, trained by Michael Bell, Natural Path. Hmm. Now, the last two times he ran on decent ground over six furlongs in Britain, he won both. Um, last race last year was five furlongs, easy ground, not even no good to him at all. Uh, but then he went to Sakir in Bahrain and he, was, uh, he, 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 he struggled on his first two starts, but his last two starts were easily his best. And the last one, he was fourth of 16. He was only beaten a length to Silent Film, trained by Charlie Appleby. So it's not like we don't know the form in Bahrain, and I think people haven't looked at it properly. But Silent Film was, was running up a hat-trick, having run at Sandown and Maydown, the time was four. The third uh, has come back and already won, and is, uh, already won in Britain, is now seven pound higher. And he's only third because Natural Path got a little bit tired over that seven furlongs. So he wants a place to run at. You're talking about Salim going forward. Obviously, Shine So Bright can, Wizard Damore does. There's a couple of outsiders that can as well. Mm. So I think there's going to be plenty of pace here. And I think if Natural Path is fit, uh, he's only a pound higher than when he last ran in Britain. No, he's actually a pound lower than when he last ran in Britain. Uh, I think he's. Uh, I, I, I think he's, you know, he's under his right conditions. I don't think he's badly handicapped, and he's a double figure price. So you're hoping that mine gives him a good pace to aim at, I'm yeah. assuming. Hmm. Yeah. All right, that's annoying, isn't it? Kills has found one, <laughs> and it's Michael Bell's natural path. And there are your four big race previews. Are we right? Are we wrong? Let us know below. Right then, let's get some weekend <coughs> naps for you. I'll take the floor if you don't mind. On my return to the show, I'm going with Mr. Haggis's Tiber Flow 135. I was pretty convinced that I was going to nap him after listening to William. What I love about William when he says he's a pretty good horse. That usually, <laughs> I've heard that before. Mm -hmm. And they go on and improve and improve and improve. And it, I, I think he's just have lots to like kills. 
Uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I worry about him on the whether that track is just a bit easy for him at six furlong. We shall see. We shall see. Uh, but yes, I like Haymaker in a 225 at Newmarket. Now, you know, before we'd established that the stands aren't in the centre, <laughs> because, you know, it looked like it was on the far side, you know, stalls one and two at the last meeting, and he was drawn one then. Yeah. Uh, but now he's drawn ten, so it means he's got the rail. Now, it was seven furlongs last time, and he was raced so freely, it was ridiculous. Right? But he hadn't beaten out of sight with a furlong to run. Like, you know, he just lasted over. It was still three quarters of a length, and the rest were well beaten off. Um, he's by uh, Like It's all sprinting in the pedigree. He's coming back in trip. Uh, they've put Harry Davis on to offset the six-pound rise. Um, yeah, I just think he'll make all again and win. I'm sensing a two-pointer here. In the uh, I think it's going to be a two-pointer. Oh, I think right. it's a one-pointer at the moment because I, I'm sure I, I'm sure I looked up and then it said stalls were in the centre. <laughs> they might well move them if they have. My name will be Mud here, no, even more so. Because I've just checked and you are correct. <laughs> all right, great. Pat Cooney complete the three-timer. Well, value is value and uh, there's plenty of markets out there, not just the win markets in each race. I do look at the lockings, the 320 at Newbury. By idiot, fine, he can do his thing. I can make a plausible case out for alcohol-free uh, being his main danger, and alcohol-free in the without the favourite market. She, she wins Group Ones, doesn't she? Yeah. It was a, it was an okay first run. I don't get Real World's price. I think he's going to be dr a drifter, and I certainly can't say Mother Earth is guaranteed to be a better filly than than alcohol-free. Yeah. So I think at prices, prices dictate opinions. Alcohol-free without Bayed in the lockage. There's a lot of love for that. I've sensed. I coming think alcohol-free is a better horse than Mother Earth. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was proved it right. That's gone. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, we could yeah, go on. Listen, there are your three weekend naps. Well, sadly, that's all we've got time for here. And what's been a thoroughly enjoyable. What a shout for myself, Dave Orson, with Paul Keeley and Pat Cooney, and of course William Agus joins us along the way. What are the weekend plans? Uh, weekend plans? I actually don't have any. I probably Dangerous. just going to sit at home. <laughs> Uh, sit at home and watch the racing. Does that mean alcohol free? Because you don't usually drink uh, at home, do you? No, I don't drink. I don't drink at home. I need to be alcohol free for a little while because punch us down and uh, you know. Sam, Amen. Uh, Ascot at the weekend was, yeah. was quite boozy. And there's a lot coming up, kills, isn't there? Of course, there's Diamond Jubilee, as you mentioned. Up. Pat, great to have you in. Are you going to keep this up? Are we going to see you in more of you? Yeah, I hope to be back in uh, next Friday for sure. Yeah, looking forward to it. Brilliant. All right, good stuff. More great racing coming your way, of course, next weekend. But this weekend, it is all about the lock-inch. Baid, the poster boy, he comes out to play. Shows those three-year-olds what he can do in the lock-inch. Great to have you with us. And don't forget, of course, to download the free Must Have Racing Both app. You can do that on the Google Play Store or the App Store itself. And, of course, gamble responsibly this weekend. From myself, Dave Orton, enjoy the sport.